Aboard the USNS Comfort, anchored in the Bay of Port-au-Prince, it can feel more like we are on a combat mission than a humanitarian one. Haitian sailboats are dwarfed by massive warships, and the Comfort, a 1,000-bed floating hospital, is flanked by U.S. Navy and Coast Guard vessels and circled 24 hours a day by patrol boats. A U.S. aircraft carrier floats in the distance. Some have criticized the United States in the wake of the earthquake in Haiti for an overly militant response to a humanitarian disaster. Be advised I have inbound with one critical patient and a doctor on board. But there is no doubt that the USNS Comfort is here to help. Before we even arrived in port, the Comfort began taking in its first few patients, transported by helicopter from other American ships already in the area. We prepare for it, and when that elevator door opens, um, we take whatever comes. We've seen a, a significant amount of wounds that have gone uh, either not treated or undertreated, um, and uh, luckily we've got the facilities and the staff on board to take care of those appropriately. Hey, stop all traffic! Stop them! With the roads badly damaged, the biggest problem in these early stages of the mission has been getting patients on board the Comfort. The Americans initially set up a landing zone on the front lawn of the collapsed National Palace in Port-au-Prince because the location provided easy access to desperately needy patients crowded onto the grounds of Haiti's General Hospital. Hey, let's go! You gotta go! You gotta go! But no sooner did the flow of patients to the Comfort hit full steam than the Navy says the Haitian government forced them to shut the landing zone down. The Haitians deny giving the order, but whoever was responsible, it was apparently felt that for a country with as painful a colonial history as Haiti, the display of foreign military power on the grounds of the National Palace was just too provocative. I had 200 patients ready for medevac from the University Hospital. I couldn't lay my hands. Really? Captain Richard Sharp, a Navy trauma surgeon in charge of the airlift, did not hide his frustration at losing the opportunity to treat so many patients so quickly. Uh, there's tremendous capability out there, um, and we can, we can manage and do a lot of good for the suffering people of Haiti. We just need to make sure we have adequate transportation to and from the ship. An alternative, more isolated location was approved, but more than 24 hours were lost as the new landing zone was set up. Captain Sharp gave the order that the Comfort would immediately take any and all Haitians, no matter the severity of their injuries. The victims began to flood in from area hospitals and NGOs, and finally, one helicopter after another, transported three patients at a time out to the ship. Back on board, patient after patient was admitted onto the Comfort with crush wounds that had gone untreated since the earthquake and become badly infected. For a few, the infections will cause death. For many more like this man, amputations will most likely be necessary in order to save the patient's life. No, 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 well, I guess it's because I speak their language and, you know, they feel like they have someone they can trust. Because at first, that's what he was telling me, he doesn't trust these people. Why are they putting in so much pain? I told him, we're, we're here to help. You're doing this for your best. And then he understood. I told him, look at me, I'm a Haitian like you. So don't worry, we're not here to hurt you. We're just taking care of you. The Creole translators, mostly young Navy corpsmen of Haitian descent, like Christopher Broussard, have become vital to the mission. Can you give us a hand over here, or are you still finished? No, no, I'm done, sir. Oh, okay, great, thanks. The Haitian patients who have endured serious physical and emotional trauma as a result of the earthquake 
cling to the translators as they cling to life itself. For the Haitians, they, I mean, this is basically a foreign country to them, even though we're just, you know, a few hundred yards off of their shore. This is a whole different world here, so we couldn't do what we do without the help of the translator. And we depend on them entirely. But just to let her know that the amount of injury that she has here is very extensive, and there's a chance we may not be able to save this foot. The bone is sticking out. It's very hard to cover that. So when she gets out of the operation, she's going to pray for that country. I thought the United States. Brenton Craig Renault, reporting for the New York Times, Port-au-Prince, Haiti.